Hi, I'm Kathy Piantagini from the Somerville Public Library. With me today are Lily from the Central Library. Hello, Lily. And Allison from the West Branch. And Allison's daughter, Catherine. And all of us are here to talk about summer reading. Um, so let's think of like the place that we're really looking forward to the most for mm -hmm. our summer reading. Um, I'm thinking beach, but it oh, could yeah. be out in the woods somewhere. Yeah. I don't know, at a pool. I read in a tree once. Oh, that's nice. During How'd you the get summer, the book yeah. Up there? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't want to know. Um, okay, so with that, let's start with you, Lily. What do you got sure. today? Well, first, I just like to say definitely beach for me. Mm -hmm. Like you know, maybe in the shade. Yeah. Nice little breeze going. Mm, Sounds nice. really great, right? Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so I just brought two books that I think are pretty popular right now and I recently read and really enjoyed. So the first one is Tangerine, maybe you've seen it on the hold shelf mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, by Kristen, I think Mangan is how you say her last name, but I'm not totally sure. Mm -hmm. um, anyhow, Tangerine is a good read-alike for people who liked Gone Girl or The Girl on the Train. Mm -hmm. Did you guys those. You read yeah. those? Mm -hmm. um, so, it definitely has like an unreliable narrator thing. You're not really sure who's telling the truth or like if somebody is maybe like a little bit crazy. You don't you don't know, right? Um, so it's about these two girls that go to Bennington College together and they become really close friends. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's this sort of tragic accident and they have a falling out. And then one of the, I guess they're now women, uh, moves to Tangier with her new husband. And sh so out of the blue, the other one shows up. Mm. And then some just like sinister stuff happens. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to give away. want to read it. I know. Right? Mm. It's pretty good. It's, um, well, the Tangier is a really interesting place. And then also the Bennington, Vermont is sort of like, a, it's like a bit gothic, their mm -hmm. time there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely like a little bit spooky when they're in Bennington and um, a little bit exotic when they're in Tangier. Mm. It takes place in the 50s. Um, so you can tell by her dress. Yeah, yeah her <laughs> awesome dress. Mm -hmm. so, oh. I'll definitely check that out because I, I had it and I had it on my nightstand, and right. then I started to read it and I couldn't get into mm. it. I don't know if mm -hmm. I just had like too many other things, you know. I don't know mm -hmm. if that happens. Yeah, I'm does. sure it happens to all of us. But anyway, now that you've told me a little bit more about it, yeah, that's a good summer uh, read. And on the cover here it says, "As if Donna Tart, who we all love, right? Jillian Flynn and Patricia Highsmith had collaborated on a screenplay to be filmed by." Hitchcock. And this wow. is Joyce Carol Oates who says that. And it's just like, they have everyone name. going and has all of the names. One little right? blurb. <laughs> yeah. So it was fun. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I think it's a really good like summer read. Okay. But one that I did love. Cersei, Madeline Miller's new book. She also wrote The Song of Achilles. And she is just like amazing. Mm. Did either, did any no. of you no. read? No. Oh my God. So she, I think she's a classics professor. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Basically, I don't know if you guys remember who Cersei is. Does anybody? Class, does anyone know who Cersei is? Okay. Mm -hmm. You do? I, she was like the witch who lived on the island. Yes, exactly. So Cersei mm -hmm. is the daughter of Helios, who is a titan. And she um, gets sent to an island because she sort of accidentally turns <laughs> somebody into a sea monster. <laughs> yeah, right? Oops. Um, so, <laughs> right? So it's, um, it's really interesting because there's a lot of Greek mythology that we probably know of mm -hmm. um, that's sort of on the outskirts of the story. And she has been a fixture in these stories, but you never really hear her oh. full life story. Mm -hmm. um, so she is like kind of the original, one of the original witches of Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. um, and her story is really cool. I also was reading articles about it earlier, and I have a quote here from the Washington Post. So it says, the archaeological evidence is sketchy, but the first pussy hat was probably knit by Circe. <laughs> <laughs> right? Among nasty women, the witch of um, Aya has held a place of prominence since Homer first sang of her wiles. Uh, so you do get a lot of like classical mm. people coming through the island. Um, really great, very powerful. Is it young adult? No, no. definitely okay. not young adult. Mm -hmm. There's some trigger subjects in here that I would Some not. mature themes? Some mature, okay. <laughs> some mature themes. Like probably a high school student would be totally fine with it, but mm -hmm. mm, 
not we're not doing middle school or anything definitely like not middle mm -hmm. school um, but really lovely I recommended it to my mom recently she seems excited to read it I'll report back when she mm -hmm. finishes Very it cool. yeah um, nice. thank you yeah I think I'm gonna segue in and share mine only because of the Bennington connection which is interesting yeah. um, because it's summer what shouldn't you be reading like I mean Nothing says summer like Shirley Jackson, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice gothic, dark, um, mm -hmm. but I do adore her. And so um, what I've been finding lately is I'm in a little bit of a reading rut. So I don't have um, like, like a nice- grabbing you? No, like I have maybe a list of things, but nothing's grabbing me. But what does grab me all the time is any Shirley Jackson I've got laying around and how I re have been reading her is I literally will just pick up something, open it and read it. So, um, what I do with Harry Potter. It's really <laughs> so delightful. Yeah. So, the thing, all right, so this is her biography, um, which this is definitely on my summer reading list. I have not read this yet. But um, as I read her essays, you know, what strikes me about her are a few things. So, she died at the age of 48, she had four children. So, her life, she was a mother, novelist, short story writer, essayist. Bennington connection? Yeah, so she and her husband moved to Bennington, Vermont. I can't remember the time period. I think somewhere in the late 40s, maybe. Okay. And he was teaching, okay. and she was at home. So she was at home doing all of this, mm -hmm. right? And so the other thing I love about Shirley Jackson is she can run the gamut of like hilarious, humorous writing about her family. So that would be a book like Among the Savages. And then um, all of her dark writing, like, um, well, The Lottery, of course, which if you haven't listened to it, I was telling um, Lily about it today, her narrating The Lottery oh. is, like, delightful. Mm -hmm. She has such a great voice. Um, but what was the thought I had about, oh, but her other darker novels and short stories, they're also funny, you know? So it's almost like, um, I like how she gets below the surface of something. Okay. So when you were talking about unreliable narrators, yeah. I was thinking the other book of hers that I'm reading now, which is, oh, I'm not gonna remember the name of it. Uh, I thought I wrote it down. Castle? Yes, okay. thank you. It's on my to read list. It has an unreliable narrator okay. in it, and that makes it a page turner. So this is her biography. I feel like this book that I just talked about is probably pretty heavily influenced by Oh, interesting. I, I was it's wondering sort of that when I was yeah. listening to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I should mention um, Ruth Franklin is the author for the biography. And then this came out a couple of years ago. So I have a, uh, my own copy of this. So this is the library copy. So it's called Let Me Tell You. And this is new stories, essays, and other writings that were um, kind of culled through all of her manuscripts and things oh, after cool. she died. So her, she has a son and daughter who kind of combed through things and pieced it all together. And there's um, an afterward that where they get to talk about that and what it was like, you Having know, with her as a mom, mother, which is yeah. fascinating. So there's that. And then the other book um, that I'm actually going to reread is Station Eleven. Um, so Emily St. John. It came out in 2014, and um, not only was it like one of the New York Times bestseller books, but it also did nominated for the National Book Award, and it also won the Arthur Clarke Award for science fiction. Oh, that's and it's interesting because I don't consider myself a science fiction reader, but um, it makes it made sense when I went back and thought about it. Yeah. But basically, so, oh, the other thing to know about the author is so this was her fourth novel. Um, She's Canadian. Mm -hmm. The story takes place um, in like the Toronto Great Lakes region. Um, did you, anyone read it? Mm -hmm. No, but I saw her speak. Oh. Really? Totally randomly. As bef actually, before the um, book came out, I was at this like uh, some librarian conference in Connecticut, mm. and she spoke about this book, and it was totally not on my radar, and I don't think it was on anybody's radar mm. at that point, and I got an arc of it. Which I might have given away. Oh and wow! I never read it, and I and then all of a sudden it was this New York Times bestseller. And I was thinking to myself, why did I give that yeah. away? And then I never <laughs> should read have it. given it a chance. I know. Well, so it's you know also what post-apocalyptic dystopian again another great summer mm -hmm. read, right? Mm -hmm. um, but 
It's a beautiful story, and I've heard her refer to it as a love letter of the modern world. Oh. So what happens is the story takes place 20 years after a flu pandemic is basically just like wiped out civilization. Terrifying. And so there's all the things that go with that when you're reading about survivors that don't have the things that you're used to having, all the modern comforts, so airplane travel, electricity, running water, mm -hmm. and all of that. But she goes further with it and talks about um, art and culture. So you're following this group of Shakespeare actors. It's like a troupe. And they go from like place to place. And they put on productions. Okay. So the story is about that. It's about the other people they run into. There's, of course, a lot of conflict involved in that part of it because they're all survivors um, and still trying to survive. And then, um, but the themes are very much like trying to move forward and doing something more, like in the situation that you have, basically. And there's one quote that she, I heard her talk about this from um, Star Trek, which I do not watch. Oh, I'm going to just say that up front, <laughs> Voyager. Um, but she was watching an episode, and one of the actors had this quote that was, because survival is insufficient, and so that was always something that was like in the back of her mind and then was when she was writing this. And I think that really speaks to um, the art and culture part of it. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful. Um, I read it when it came out and then our director, Glenn, he just finished it and had it in his hand one day. And I was like, oh, I'm planning on rereading that. And so he handed it to me. And I love when those moments yep. happen. So yeah. anyway, Allison, I see you and Catherine have some thing you are going to talk about for summer reading? We mm -hmm. do. All right. So first, we have a picture book called Hello, Goodbye, Dog. Mm. And it's really cute. It's, it's a great book. Um, it's about the friendship between this dog and this girl. And the dog desperately wants to go to school with the girl, which I know is not really what you want to read about during summer. Mm. But it's still <laughs> a great book, right? Very so cute, um, the dog cannot go to school with the girl. It's not allowed. And it's just so devastating. Um, but throughout mm. the story, um, the dog gets trained as a service animal and then can come to school with the dog, with the girl, and help oh. her with the things that she needs. Um, so it's just a really sweet book, um, pleasant illustrations, nice colors, um, and I think it's a fun one that everyone can relate to and enjoy, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Because who doesn't want their dog to come to school? And I would like, can I point something out? Yeah, please. So it doesn't have like, it doesn't mention like with extra emphasis on the fact that she's in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. It's just like kind of part of the story, yeah. but it's not mm -hmm. like, they don't make a big deal out of mm -hmm. it. Right. Lovely. Which I think is something that um, children's literature really needs is that all sorts of differences mm -hmm. in kids are shown but not the point of right. the story, yeah. right? They just want to be, that's the way this kid is. Yeah. Absolutely. Good point, Kath. Yeah. yeah. Do you mind if I open that up and look at the pictures? Yes. I can't help myself. Okay. <laughs> I love Thank the tail you. wagging. Right, the dog is very alive. So the, the dog just kind of jumps oh off all the Oh my goodness, pages. look at, help. Mm -hmm. oh, pop, pop. That's beautiful. Is it a good read aloud too? It's a great yeah. read aloud, yeah. A little long for some of our story times, but yeah. But good. Oh, very sweet. Oh my gosh. Oh. The dog can't get in. Ah, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> wow, that's wonderful. All right, I'm just gonna quickly skip to the back. Sorry. <laughs> no, Keep talking, I'll it hand ends. it over. Um Oh, looks like maybe this is the training, the mm -hmm. school. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got some check marks here Moose. for Moose is the, Moose dog. Is the name of the dog. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> yeah. Yay. And this is when Moose gets to go to school. That's awesome. Very beautiful. Thank you. Oh. Yes, those picture books. So that's our picture book, and then we've also brought a chapter book that Catherine so, can tell you about. Yeah, this is the chapter book. It's called Greetings from Witness Protection. <laughs> And so it's about this family, uh, mom, dad, son, and so the mom's family has committed like a lot of crimes and various other criminal things, and she is being blamed and threatened for like the by and for the crimes, and so they have to go into witness protection, like changing their names and all that, and then so she, this is the main character, her real name is Nikki, but throughout the book she has to change her name. She's called Charlotte. She's with the family, and she's just hiding them. And it's about like how how they're not being found, and then how they might be found, and like the lengths they go to to not be found and like figured out. Hmm. And it's a really good book. It's 
pretty fast paced. It's it's funny, and uh, yeah, it's just a really good book. Hmm. Is it straightforward, or does anything happen that you wouldn't expect? Um, there are some plot twists, but like the main, like the point of the story is clear. And so, are like the first thing I'm thinking about? Are there these clumsy moments trying to live? Yeah. With different so, names and yeah, identities of, like, and all of that. Yeah, slipping up of the identities. That in the beginning of the book, they go through like a lot of training, which is kind of cool to mm -hmm. look at. And yeah. Hmm. So. And is there a part in it where like maybe some bad guys show up oh. and challenge the whole like anonymity and secrecy? Yeah. Because Ooh. it's it's very hard when your family's the person you're trying to hide from. Because who knows you better? Than yeah, your exactly. Family. Right. All right. I feel like I have a lot of questions about this. Book. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't but don't give anything away. away. <laughs> 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 All right. That's awesome. Thank yeah, you. Fantastic. All right. So finally, I have brought the magazine Chop Chop. Mm. Um, we have a lot of magazines in all the children's departments and all over the library. And this is one that I really like. Um, it's a cooking magazine for kids. Cool. And but the recipes are things that an adult would be, you know, quite happy making: peach tomato and avocado salad. Mm. Yeah. Um, doesn't it look nice? Yeah. There was another peach one at the end. There's like three the, peach. Yeah, things. There's a lot of peach based oh, things. That's good. Um, yeah. But it's great. It's great for kids. It has really easy um, directions. Ooh, summer bowls. Bowls are such a thing now. Bowls are Love totally a thing. Yeah. Just um, throw it all in there. Mm -hmm. In addition to recipes, it has kitchen skill how to p have and pit an avocado. You know, just kind of helpful things that I think kids can learn. Um, yeah. At various ages. Mm -hmm. um, now, do you like cooking? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> excellent. I keep bringing this home. Um, the editor is Catherine Newman, who I kind of have a crush on. Do you know who mm. she is? She's That's from so Western familiar. Mass. Uh, <laughs> oh, she's from Western Mass. She's from Western Mass, yeah. She's a writer, and I love her writing, and she's the editor of this oh, magazine wait, oh. also. Is she the friend of Jennifer Rosner? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, but even if she wasn't the editor of this magazine, I think I would still like it quite a lot. So, so what's her background? Is she. Catherine Newman? Yeah, I don't think I know her. Oh, she's a, kind of an essayist, and she's written a couple books, memoirs, mm -hmm. and one um, middle grade fiction that came out this past year. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, so I really like that one. I want to read it. It was about kids who get stuck in Ikea overnight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that sounds like a dream. That's cool. like from the mixed up files, yes, it, but instead it, it, of I a was, museum. That was her inspiration. No. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I so want to read that. We have it at West. That's, oh, <laughs> from that the mixed like up fun. files is one of my most favorite books. <laughs> is it as fun? Did you get to read that one? I, I did read it. I like her I her essay writing better than her um, her <laughs> fiction. Okay, wow. But um, Max also read it, and I think he liked it. All right, so all he right. Has fun taste in books. Yeah, he really yeah, does. Mm -hmm. He does, and he's very good at matching. He's very good at readers' advisory. Yeah, Max mm -hmm. is. Good. All right. Segue on to our wow, that other is staff. fantastic. But, yeah. yeah. Um, so it so sounds that's like what we great, and I didn't get a chance to find out. Are you going to be vacationing? Where are you um, going to be bringing your summer reads? We Our summer reading is everywhere, constantly. <laughs> um, but we did just get back from a family road trip, and everybody read a lot in the car. Mm -hmm. That's great. Awesome. Um, yeah. And Catherine, are you participating in the library's summer reading program? Mm. Oh, yes. She was the first person to sign up. Really? <laughs> yes. awesome. So I think they're all underway right now, right? Yeah, yeah they're they're all started we got at the a yeah. ton of people. Signed we up did. We had a big day yesterday. So all the kids have a program, the teens have a program. The adults have a program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've seen the treats and they look pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So rock candy when you mm -hmm. enter and then there are some prizes. Mm -hmm. I know for the adult summer reading program, the prize, the grand prize mm -hmm. is to is a voucher for two tickets to the American Repertory Theater mm -hmm. to whatever awesome. show they want, which is awesome. That's yeah. great. Get those get those reviews okay. in. Every review is an entry. Um, and then also gift certificates to Grooves, the um, record shop Fun. just in Union. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also Porter Square Books. That's Very great. Nice. Yay. Yay, yeah. local businesses. I know. It's, it's thank you to support them for sure. Well, have a great summer, you guys. You too. And you too. Read all of our books. And um, thank you.